hey hello guys welcome to my channel welcome to another video and if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing it will be helpful for you to learn about poultry farming on this channel at your own time anytime you want so uh please consider subscribing uh today we want to talk about this uh viral disease which, which is a newcastle disease which every poultry farmer maybe you just heard about it but you're not aware what this kind of a disease but those who have heard about Newcastle disease, they know like it's a viral disease and no poultry farmer wants it close to their flock because it can wipe off your whole flock within three days. So that's what we want to talk about today, how we can avoid this disease from coming in into our beds and how we can uh, prevent it. So let's dive in real quick. So this uh, kind of uh, a virus, uh, it's uh, it called uh, Paramaxovirus. It can be transmitted through the hair, like in the hair. You know, this disease, for example, if you have uh, uh, a farm which is actual neighbor, which they also have uh, their beds in, and those beds uh, having this uh, kind of uh, disease, which is a Newcastle disease, this kind of a disease can be transmitted as far as uh, five kilometers. And you know how far five kilometers is. This disease can be transmitted as far as that. So. Apart from that, there's other thing, there's other ways this kind of a disease can be transmitted into our poultry. So number one, uh, this kind of a disease can be transmitted into our poultry through uh, the beds. These beds that we see, uh, they all, they are also the carriers of uh, this kind of a virus, which is a paramaxo uh, virus. These free range beds. So that's why always avoid your beds coming in into your Cross to your poultry. That's why we put these wires, that are like uh, uh, chicken mash wires, so that birds can't get in into our poultry to avoid that Newcastle disease from coming in that is uh, carried by those uh, free range birds. Then the other thing again, for the free range of birds, of course, the way you can avoid free range birds is uh, make sure where your poultry is built, there are no trees because you know trees uh, attract birds from coming in. So if your poultry is near where the trees are, the chances of your beds getting uh, that uh, param paramaxo virus is very, very high. Then the other thing, if you, in your, at your farm, you also have free range chickens. You know, these local chickens. These also, because they are free range, they also carry that virus. So make sure you avoid uh, free range chickens from coming close to your poultry because that disease may come through into your poultry where your broiler beds are and uh, make sure free range beds don't come close to your poultry to avoid that uh, from her from your beds to get that virus then the other thing that you should always put into consideration is always vaccinate your beds at the right time i know there's some poultry farmers uh, who are doing organic but before i go there let me mention this when you are vaccinating your beds make sure you vaccinate them with the collect ratio of water you need to use for that particular dose you are having in case you don't know the ratio of water you need to use for your dose of your chickens you are having this video this link just up there that will pop up here you can check out and learn how to measure your water for your vaccine then the other thing I want to go to those who are, who are doing uh, organic poultry farming, which is a good thing, which is effective. So when you are doing organic poultry, don't avoid giving your beds a vaccine. For you to save yourself from this other, for this from this pressure, vaccinate your beds at the right time. Vaccinate your beds with the correct vaccines. Don't just say because you are performing organic, then you don't want to give your beds a vaccine. Vaccine is not a drug. In case you didn't know, I've got a, another video you can check on the link, which is here. There's another video that I briefly explained about how vaccine works. In case you don't know, because maybe you're performing a organic poultry, then you think your beds don't have to get a vaccine. Watch that video. So, I've mentioned free range beds. The beds don't have to come close. Then the other thing is your free range chickens. Then the other thing now is. Uh, when your beds are having a Newcastle uh, disease, which means 
there's uh, because Newcastle disease that doesn't just come in on its own. The how this is why this disease is very dangerous is because it joins forces with other diseases like uh, CRD, which is a chronic respiratory disease. Then it also joins forces with E. coli. So make sure to avoid this disease from coming into your cheeks. Make sure you you release stress from your beds because you know these diseases they get into our poultry through stress so make sure you don't overcrowd your beds then again you make sure your litter system is clean then you make sure also your ventilation is very much okay so that you don't have any stress on your beds litter system ventilation and your bowel security before you bring in your new frog make sure you clean up your room to avoid Newcastle disease from coming into your chickens so let me just put a phrase on how you you can clean up your room before you start because some people they just start disinfecting the room without cleaning it so number one face clean up your room with at least washing powder you clean up the floors then the second thing you do after you clean up the floors for me, I don't, uh, uh, my, my, my flow, uh, what I usually do is uh, the litter system, the way, uh, the way I use it, I first lay down the sacks. Then that's when I put on top, I put my sawdust. So that when cleaning up, I just curly the sacks, throw them out. Which means the down part is clean. That's what I do. So make sure you clean up with washing powder. The floors, you clean them up. Then the second thing for accurate cleaning you buy uh, powdered chlorine you 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 dilute it in water make sure it's high concentrated then you spray the room with uh, that uh, chlorinated water then close up the room for about uh, close to three hours then open up then after two to three days that's when you can disinfect the room that way you are sure your room is clean if there's things which are supposed to be moved out, move them out. Then the other thing again, when disinfecting uh, your room, again, even the moment you are cleaning up your room, you also need to clean up your your feeders and your drinkers. Then also the day of disinfecting the room, you also need to disinfect the feeders and the drinkers. You also disinfect them. That way you are safe. You don't have any trace of uh, this viral disease, the Newcastle disease. So now, let's talk about how we can treat this disease. Since this disease comes in with uh, other friends like uh, CRD and E. coli. So the treatment depends on uh, the symptoms you are seeing. Sometimes you can find like maybe it's, it, it only combined forces with uh, CRD, which means you need to make sure, oh, before I start explaining that, uh, the other thing is you need to make sure you give your beds anti-stress drugs you give them uh, the drugs that will release stress out of the beds since you clean up the room you, you make sure your floor is dry your beds are no longer having stress then the other thing is you give them high quality feed because what we need now is to boost up the immune system of the chickens they need to have the immune system boosted then then the other thing is, when treating the disease, it depends with the symptoms you are seeing with your beds. If, the, if there's E. coli or there is CRD. So you check all those symptoms. There's people who have uh, faced uh, this challenge whereby they are treating the disease, then it's not going away. That means that disease has joined forces with the other diseases. So what you do, especially with uh, Newcastle disease, that's how dangerous it is. Because if you are treating it, with the uh, symptoms you are seeing, of course, we all know you can't uh, treat, uh, you can't cure a Newcastle disease. You just manage it. You suppress that, uh, you suppress the virus, you suppress also the other bacteria with the uh, antibiotics according to the uh, symptoms you are seeing. So, of course, the common symptom that we know about Newcastle disease is we see a greenish purple. Then we are aware like we have Newcastle in our poultry beds will lose appetite they will be gasping then beds also will start will have cough then you see also uh nervous signs like paralysis 
then you also see like your birds twisting their necks they will twist their neck because uh, the the bacteria is now preying up with the nervous system so you see paralysis you also see your bed rotating their neck sometimes your bed can't stand still it just rotates it can't eat very well especially from chicks okay so there are symptoms that you will see like okay this is the symptoms so for no for, for 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 flu of course i've got the video you can see it it will pop up here then you can watch that video and see how it is then there's also for equal i also have the video you can check it on my my other videos you find it there so that you are aware how to treat this disease so first if there is a crd that means you treat your beds with uh, the antibiotics that will treat uh, flu and cough which are the which these are uh, antibiotics are those antibiotics which have this supplement which is a uh, tylosine so medications like uh, tylodox doxin fluban etc there are so many antibiotics you can use to treat flu but make sure those uh, antibiotics they contain tylosine then if uh, they've joined forces with e coli which means you also now have to treat e coli with a medication that will treat e coli and uh, the type of medication that will treat e coli because they've joined forces the type of medication that will, will make sure clear up e coli is uh, the, the medication which uh, um, contains cholestin sulfate which means you go for medications like limoxin amoxil tetracycline etc there are many out there even sulfur drugs they treat also e coli so you make sure you go with these antibiotics then you need to combine now these uh, antibiotics the ones that will treat uh, crd and the one that will treat e coli you need to combine them also you combine them with uh, the anti-stress drugs you combine them together for example if you are going for tylodox you get tylodox you also get uh, 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 limoxin and then you also get the anti-stress drugs then you mix them together then you administer to your beds until you see change into your beds so that's how you treat viral disease like uh, Newcastle because Newcastle you can't you cannot cure it you only suppress those uh, diseases which you are seeing the symptoms into your beds you suppress those uh, so that your bed can grow until market time so you suppress E. coli you suppress also CRD that way now your beds will perform very well then there's those who are performing uh, organic then they'll find their way how to treat uh, CRD and E. coli uh, CRD uh, organically then they'll be able to treat that uh, disease which means you are now good to go then you won't see those symptoms which means which means you are good to go your beds will now perform very well so that's how you treat a viral disease like newcastle that's how it comes in that's why you find like some people treat would treat their beds several times you find like there's no good performance no appetite they are losing weight you know when they lose appetite they lose weight so that's how you treat viral diseases you combine and biotics and anti-stress you combine them that's how you treat the disease so i'm sure guys you've understood and i'm sure you are aware how you can treat newcastle you can manage newcastle because you can't cure it so how you can manage it so thank you guys for watching and if you are new to the channel please consider subscribing so that you are able to be updated and also click on the notification bell so that you receive uh, a notification on each and every video that we put in about poultry farming so thank you for watching guys bye bye see you next time